Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit to be with you all. Welcome to this Cathedral of Hope, this house of prayer. Welcome Pilgrim Saints of Westdale to this meeting place of prayer and song. Welcome to this house of peace and grace where love and faith hold hands. Beloved of Christ, we gather to answer the call to be free, free in the Spirit. So arise and shine, for God's light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Jesus invites us to come and see, to put down our nets, and to follow. Come with me, he says, come walk with me. Come welcome with me the world to the door of God's house. Come leave what you cling to, lay down what burdens you carry, and find with hands empty that hearts can hold so much. For we are the family of God, and we offer Christ our hope, ordained by the Spirit of Christ and held by God's grace. <coughs> Ordinary people expecting the extraordinary, called to be the very people of God, beloved of Christ. We gather together today in the same Pentecostal spirit who inspired the prophets, and apostles, and who guides our faith and life in Christ, engages us through the gospel word proclaimed, claims us in the waters of baptism, and feeds us with the breath of life. So relax in the spirit, sway with the music, be captured by prayer, for this is holy ground, and you are a child of the spirit. Beloved of Christ, each one of you are holy ground. The spirit of pilgrimage gathers us together today, and so let us walk in the light of Christ's love, Give thanks. <coughs> it's great to be back with you. To see your beautiful shiny faces. As we gather in the spirit of the Lord. Wow, a great picture. Oh, the trilliums. <coughs> As followers of Christ, we are called to be people of love and truth and reconciliation, peacemakers, being the change that we want to see in this world. And by recognizing the original inhabitants of this land on which this place of worship has been built to live out our calling to honor a noble people in a way of life that moves in step with the rhythm of creation. For thousands of years, the first peoples have walked upon this land as stewards of this gift from the Creator. And we give thanks for elders past and present and emerging here on Turtle Island. For we make this land acknowledgement very grateful to the first caretakers of this holy ground. Westdale United Church is situated on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe Mississauga and the land covered by the Williams Treaty.
welcomes you here just as you are, graces you with an unconditional love, a peaceful rest, and a yoke that is easy and light. Beloved of Christ, free the splendor of your hope, release the courage within you, clear a path for Christ's dancing spirit. And with a jump for joy, leaping in faith, we give thanks to God. I invite you to join with me in our call to worship. If you are happy and you know it, clap your hands. You're all happy. <laughs> if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. God is not a name, God is love. You crown us with steadfast love and mercy. Stand in awe. We gather in the chorus of life. The love of God is visible. We respond in joy. The wind of the Spirit is moving. We respond in hope. We believe in the Spirit of Christ. Who dances through our lives. Sisters and brothers, arise. The living and moving Spirit of Christ has called us together. Let the church say, Amen.
creation is responsive. Creator God, Son, guiding spirit, as we, walk, be our way. as we learn, be our truth, as we grow, be our life. You are the light of the minds that search for you. The joy of the hearts that love you. We need your words for the lighting of love. Shine your light upon our path. Come sweep us up in your love again. In the name of the Creator, Christ and our Comforter. Amen. <clears throat> the first reading comes from Romans 8, verses 12 to 17. It can be found on page 1372 of your Bible. My dear friends, we must not live to satisfy our desires. If you do, you will die. But you will live if, by the help of God's Spirit, you say no to your desires. Only those people who are led by God's Spirit are His children. God's Spirit doesn't make us slaves who are afraid of Him. Instead, we become His children and call Him our Father. God's Spirit makes us sure that we are His children. His Spirit lets us know that together with Christ, we will be given what God has promised. We will also share in the glory of Christ, because we have suffered with Him. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Second reading comes from St. John chapter 3, verses 1 to 17. Jesus and Nicodemus. There was a man named Nicodemus... I said Nicodemus, sorry. <laughs> there was a man named Nicodemus who was a Pharisee and a Jewish leader. One night he went to Jesus and said, Sir, we know that God has sent you to teach us. You could not work these miracles unless God were here with you. Jesus replied, I tell you for certain that you must be born from above before you can see God's kingdom. Nicodemus asked, How can a grown man ever be born a second time? Jesus answered, I tell you for certain that before you can get into God's kingdom, you must be born, not only by water, but by the Spirit. Humans give life to their children, yet only God's Spirit can change you into a child of God. Don't be surprised when I say that you must be born from above. Only God's Spirit gives new life. The Spirit is like the wind that blows wherever it wants to. You can hear the wind, but you don't know where it comes from or where it's going. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. Jesus replied, How can you be a teacher of Israel and not know these things? I tell you for certain that we know what we are talking about, because we have seen it ourselves. But none of you will accept what we say. If you don't believe when I talk to you about things on earth, how can you possibly believe if I talk to you about things in heaven? No one has gone up to heaven except the Son of Man, who came down from there. And the Son of Man must be lifted up, just as the metal snake was lifted up by Moses in the desert. Then, everyone who has faith in the Son of Man will have eternal life. God loved the people of this world so much that He gave His only Son, so that everyone who has faith in Him will have eternal life and never really die. God did not send His Son into the world to condemn His people. He sent Him to save them. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to
listen with your heart. As we heard Michelle read so while about living by the Spirit, eh? and, and being guided by the Spirit, sort of this mysterious wind of God. Pilgrim Saints of Westdale, would you pray with me? Eternal One, silence from whom your words arise, ground us in your grace, make us attentive to the light of your good news, dance us into freedom, great heart of life, reveal the power of the gospel, bless old words and new messages, old messages and new words, and let your wisdom choose our words and chase our fears away. Spirit of wisdom, awaken our hearts. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. <coughs> White feathers and tangled gardens. Did you ever see that picture? Anybody know who painted that? James Edward Hervey, not Harvey, but Hervey McDonald, one of the group of seven, one of the founding uh, members of the group of seven, it was painted in 1916. I gazed upon this painting uh, last weekend at the National Art Gallery in Ottawa. It's there, and I went up for the Tulip Festival. I remember somebody telling me last year they went up to the Tulip Festival. I never thought I'd take a bus up to see tulips, but uh, it was magnificent. It was really, wow. Music and so I went into the National Art Gallery of Ottawa, and this painting is there. It's about six feet across and about five feet high. It's a massive, big picture. It's called Tangled Gardens. You can see that, eh? All the... I just stood there and I gazed at this uh, painting, and, and the tour guide talked about how at the time. When uh, James Edward uh, Hervey MacDonald uh, painted it, people criticized him for his <coughs> painting being childlike. He said it's childlike, and it's uh, something so small and mundane, they said, he did, and painted on such a big surface. Something small. Along with Lauren Harris, who was from Brentford, uh, MacDonald was a key initiator of the Group of Seven, and one of the most uh, outspoken of its members. And this painting raised controversy when it was first exhibited in 1916, this large canvas with this relatively mundane subject. One critic even compared it to a huge tomato salad. <laughs> it made me hungry when I was looking at it. So. But the artist's design is very deliberate. If you read some of McDonald's uh, writings, the sunflowers uh, bend in repeated patterns across the canvas. His use of Complementary colors is bright, but balanced. It was meant to motivate people to paint like a child. Making this small overlooked so big to capture a moment. Picasso said it, that it took him four years to paint like Raphael, but it took him a lifetime to paint like a child. Every child is an artist, Picasso said. The challenge is to remain an artist after we grow up. To paint like a child. I've been unpacking a little bit lately and I found this picture <coughs> to Uncle Chris from Lauren with love. And there's orange and there's purple. I thought, hey, Stephanie's favorite color and uh, my favorite color. And on the back is purple and orange. It's all purple and orange. And, uh, Lauren is 20 years old now, and I, I don't know, she was probably, I don't know, two or three when she did that, and, but to Uncle Chris from Lauren, with love, and, and the sailboat, and I thought about that, the wind of the spirit, and, and to paint like a child, and uh, I have a lot of framed artwork of the group of seven all over the house, but this is my most precious picture, and it's on the fridge, and uh, so I see it a lot, <laughs> I go to the fridge, I thought about that, to paint like a child, the kingdom belongs to children, Jesus tells us today. As we heard Michelle read so well, Jesus is talking about being born again, born innocent, born anew, beginning again. I think he's talking about time. It's about time. Jesus never talked about a promised land, but he did talk a lot about a promised time. A time to forgive 
time to love, a time to ask for forgiveness, a time to give forgiveness, a time to stand up again, a time to open your eyes and ears, a time to hope, and the time was always now. To be born again, I think, has something to do with time. I knew a woman a number of years ago, her name was Rosie, and she got her driver's license when she was 80 years old. She lived in a little place called Neat Cove. It's not even on all the maps. She was 80 years old. Her husband never let her get her driver's license. He was not a nice man. And when he would go out fishing, he would take the phone off the wall and take it with him. Imagine. After he died, she got her license. And she drove all of her friends to every bingo, I think, on Cape Breton Island. She told me that she felt like she was born again. A new creation. Freedom. A promised time. It's about time. It's about freedom. It's about discovering things about yourself. Gifts you didn't know you had. It's about knowing you have a place on the canvas. This large canvas. It's not a language we often speak. It makes people very quiet. It made Nicodemus very quiet. What Jesus told Nicodemus was shocking. Shocking to Nicodemus and maybe shocking to us too. Put up your sail and catch the wind. The Spirit is like the wind. People born of the Spirit, born again, are like the wind. Freedom. Nicodemus, you need to be born all over again. This time born into God's life, into the Spirit. For me, this is one of the great encounters of the Bible. It has deep and essential things to teach us about ourselves and about the way that God lives with us. Nicodemus is a leader, a member of the ruling body of this country. He carries great responsibility. His image fills the canvas. It's a self-portrait. He has a brilliant mind. He has the resources to live very well. He has every reason for being very secure. He wields considerable power. How can these things be, Nicodemus says. And that's the last thing he says. He has been gripped by something he does not understand, by something in his heart that he knows to be true. A grace. The truth that the canvas is bigger than you think. At what moment this new Nicodemus is born, we do not know. We know. Nicodemus says to Jesus when he first comes into the room, You are the teacher sent from God. You do not know, Jesus says to Nicodemus right before he leaves. Jesus is hard on Nicodemus. That's what I think Nicodemus is asking. Nicodemus wants something deeper, as we all do, something more. So Nicodemus comes to Jesus secretly, under the cover of darkness, to say, You come from God. Everyone can see that. I want to know God too. I want to really know God. <coughs> know that God loves me. Be born again. How can these things be? Nicodemus says, born again. There's a theological elegance to it, a poetry, if nothing else. Nicodemus was all grown up. He went to Jesus at night when no one could see him and ask him, where he is going, and Nicodemus was afraid. When we open up space for the Spirit and let the Spirit fill that space within us, we begin to change and become agents of change. It's familiar poetry, it's theological elegance, wisdom, such as this passage offers is mysterious and strange. And it begs for a little space both to be and to laugh. I don't know how to do that, said Nicodemus. Nicodemus said, how do I even begin? The canvas is so big. For God so loved the world, Jesus says, it begins with that right in the middle. Start with that and work out, work your way out to the edges. 
See, some people thought that God was a fearsome judge who stared down and made us behave out of fear and guilt. Some other people think God was a divine clockmaker who made the creation, wound it up, and lets it tick away on its own. Other people think of God as like some distant star, cold and unblinking, shining out there somewhere, but far away from us in our lives. But when we walk the way of Christ, we discover that God is not a fearsome judge, or a clockmaker, or a distant star. But God is rather a love that will not let us go. Go away, or go alone. To be born again is to wake up to that truth, but it's no easy thing. This week I went into the police station downtown to get a police check. It's something that clergy need to do every year. Did you know that there is a clergy code of ethics in the United Church? I have a pamphlet. I saw on the news this week about the grocery stores. This was on the news. Loblaw said that it will sign this grocery code of ethics if Walmart signs on, and Walmart said they'll sign on, if Loblaw signs on, and I think Sobeys, I don't know Sobeys where they're at, but a code of ethics for a grocery store. Airlines, I have a friend who's a pilot for Air Canada. He says there's a code of ethics. You hear about that? People traveling and having awful experiences. He's code of ethics. Rules. Being born again is more than following the rules, Christ says. Christianity is a relationship. It's a way of life, of seeing and experiencing this tangled garden. It's about loving your neighbor. It's about loving yourself. It's about stewardship of the earth. Christianity is a lifestyle, a way of being in the world that is simple and nonviolent and shared and loving. A way of living, of sharing this universal spirit of Christ. Nicodemus came looking for clarity, but instead he is offered a teaching that seems designed to keep him in the dark. How can these things be? There is a place where human knowing runs out. This is what it means to be human. Strong winds really do blow through people's lives, and the spirit does not hand out maps showing where the wind came from or where it is going. It's about trusting God. In rebirth, boundaries widen without direction, for the wind blows where it wills, and you hear the sound of it. But you do not know whence it comes or whither it goes, so it is everyone who is born of the Spirit. To be born again is to be born vulnerable, it is to be born twice as strong, and twice as meek, as only the truly strong can be meek. To be born again is like being handed the paint and the brush and being told to first draw yourself and make it beautiful. The real skill is to raise the sails and to catch the power of the wind as it passes by. To be born again is to belong to God, to the life of God, abundant life. To be born again is to be a child of God,
Jesus pours mercy out like rain. Jesus still walks on water. He grows abundance out through the broken cracks of things. For we are all created in the image of God. And God's canvas is big. And it includes the small. It always includes the small. I invite you to lift up your voices and join in singing, God, we praise you for the morning.
Source of our love, you journey with us, offering endless compassion. Heal all that is broken in our hearts, in our streets, in our world. In the silence within us, or in the speaking aloud, we place all our cares, trusting in your love that never fails. We pray for all those whom we love. upon them with healing and with grace. Gift us with spirit that we may live boldly each day as children of your kingdom light. We love you for the feast that is abundant life, and friendship and laughter and understanding and trust. The world you have crafted in the words, the sounds, the colors with which people discover your grace. Kindle, O God, in our hearts we pray the flame of love which never ceases, that it may burn within us and give light to others, and put to flight the darkness of the world. <clears throat> Let Christ, in whose name we pray, be seen in us. For we pray in the name of your great love for us, the risen one who stands among us and calls us each by name, the one who taught us how to pray together, praying as we sing.
So with open hands, we have been given with open hands, we now share. Like seeds of grace, scatter our gifts of time and talent and treasure. Grounded in faith and growing in love, may they heal and bless the world. In the sweet, sweet name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Thanks, Mary Jane. Announcements. Westdale GSD fundraiser. So the bidding closes at 12 noon. How long was that sermon? Is it noon yet? <laughs> uh, right after I'm away for a time like the last, when I come back, I feel sorry for you because I usually preach a longer sermon. To, I don't know why, but uh, so it's 12 noon. I think you got time, and I see the lists are growing, and uh, I see that lasagna. Yeah. I don't know. I think I might sneak in at the end there. <laughs> and, uh, maybe not. It's a wonderful fundraiser, and, and so the lists are growing there. Aging abundantly, lunch and learn. Um, we were kind of hoping for a few more folks to sign up. So there's four people now, and, and um, if, we, if we get a few more, then we'll have it. If, if not, we may uh, wait for that. But that's um, that's this Wednesday, and if it happens, a spring cleanup. So a big thank you. I know Ian wants to thank everybody, and the church looks great. Thanks, Chris. Yes, I just wanted to uh, make mention that uh, we had a very successful spring cleaning yesterday. Um, we had a good turnout of people. I think there are approximately 20. Um, things such as the kitchen was uh, cleaned and reorganized. Um, a lot of time was spent in the nursery, uh, making sure that the toys that were good stayed and the toys that weren't so good got tossed. Um, we had windows clean. If you notice the windows of the sanctuary, we actually contracted that uh, to be done. And I think the, uh, Ed did a wonderful job and they're nice and bright. Um, we had shrubs trimmed, we had entranceways cleaned, um, lots of, of good fellowship, fun, and I uh, appreciate uh, all those that came out. Thank you.
friends of Jesus, people of heart and spirit, go boldly into this world that God loves. Honor the image of God in all people. Walk in Christ's truth. Spread his light. Speak with love. Work with passion. Act in faith. Let gratitude be the pillow on, pitch on which you kneel to pray. Go where your prayers take you. Turn compassion into action. Grounded in faith, grow in love. Be deep, bold, and daring in your faith. And may you be blessed into the week to come. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. And may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forever. And may the Lord be with you until we meet again. And may you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet. And may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you.